There's a time for kids to play outside, go to summer camp, and forget about school for a little while. Studies show that kids lose significant knowledge in reading and math over the summer break. Some call this the summer slide. Well, if you're worried that this might be happening to your kid, the folks over at Richland Library have plenty of programs in place to keep their learning from slipping up. Joining me now to tell us more about them is Takara Young and Heather McHugh. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thank you for having Thank us. For having yes, really glad to hear about some of the programs you guys have to offer. So Heather, I know that you're the manager of Children and Teen Services at the library. That's so right. talk a little bit about the, some of the trends you notice in kids when it comes to their learning over the summer. Well, I like to compare it to um, a marathon runner. So if you think of somebody that trains intensely, mm -hmm. they train, they train, they train, they get better, their endurance gets better, they're able to go for longer distance more easily. But then if they take a break and try that marathon again, it's really tough, right? Yes. <laughs> so that's what that summer is like. So mm -hmm. we really do see that because everybody does feel kind of exhausted at the end of a school year and they do need that break. Mm -hmm. But the library offers some really fun learning opportunities that don't feel so much like schoolwork mm -hmm. and that um, are really engaging and interactive for our children and teens. Absolutely, so we'll get to some of those in a moment, but yes. knowing that a lot of them are more interactive, they're more yes. fun, talk about some of the differences you notice in kids' attitude towards learning when it comes to activities that get them engaged. Absolutely. I think when they're able to kind of guide, chart their own course, when they're able to kind of take part in their learning, mm -hmm. and also when they have a choice, and that's one of the great things about all of our programs across our system, is that you can kind of choose what is most appealing to you. Mm -hmm. And we have everything from science to art to things that really uh, teens want to get into, manga and anime. Mm -hmm. And so that it feels like learn it doesn't feel like learning to them because they're so interested. Absolutely. And Takara, talk to us more about some of the programs that you guys have. Specifically, I know the summer reading challenge that's going on. Yes, our summer reading challenge is in full swing. And this year there's a little twist to it. So as opposed to just reading, you can actually track your activity by time or various activities. And we have a plethora of activities that are going on just this week. There are mm -hmm. several events that you can attend, but I, I'm so happy that Heather brought some of our trinkets here um, yes. that you can win as prizes and the actual summer learning challenge mm -hmm. list that you can just navigate and scavenger your way through the libraries this summer. Absolutely. And, you know, studies show that it's more those younger elementary school students that tend to have this uh, learning loss, you could say, in the summer. And those are really foundational, critical years. And, you know, also with the pandemic not too long ago, some parents started to notice their children slipping behind. What advice maybe would you give to parents who are noticing their kids are slipping up and they want to get them back on track this summer? Sure, absolutely. There's lots of resources out in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and again, sometimes it's as simple as coming in for a program and then saying like, hey, let's check out some books or yeah. let's find more learning activities. And we have all kinds of things. You mentioned scavenger hunts we have, and um, which are fun and, and oft, often have built, um, learning built into them. Mm -hmm. Games, playing games can engage their, their learning. So look for those resources. We're a great place. We even have our education studio with reading specials mm -hmm. where parents can get coaching appointments if their child needs a little extra reading support during the summer. Wow, and uh, you guys have such excellent facilities, especially at Richland Library, Maine. You know, there's so many extra rooms in there, so many things you could do. So, you know, learning is not just about being by the book. There is exploratory learning too. Absolutely. Talk about some of the programs that get kids more hands-on. Definitely. I know one of our fan phases is actually our Read to a Therapy Dog. Okay. That's where you can come in. We have some, like you said, the elementary students who may be struggling with reading, mm -hmm. well, they can come in and practice on a furry friend. So that's one of the options. But as Heather said, there's so many different ways that they can come in mm -hmm. and tackle learning from a non-traditional aspect. Yes, and right on your screen here, you can see this is Read to a Therapy Dog, one of the many events that they have going on this summer. You can share a good book with a furry friend. And if you're struggling with reading, no need to worry, they don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday, June 27th, 2024, that is one of the many Read to a Therapy Dog events that they have going on. That's from 3.30 to 4.30. And there is really something for everyone. There is also a Meet the Author event coming up soon. We're gonna pull that full screen up here to get that information from you. You can meet author and Angela May, and she talks about what it was like to write her series, which is very fun for elementary school students, really on par for their age and reading level. That is Thursday, June 20th, so this Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m., and there also will be a book sale and a signing after, so meet and greet with the author is always fun. And if you want to get your hands a little more messy and 
cook something yummy. There is also a really fun make it and take it pasta event that is hosted by the Hayward Culinary School and that will be Thursday, July 25th from 4.30 p.m. to 6 p.m. And as I said, this, these are just three of the many events that they have going on this summer. Learning doesn't have to be by the book. It can be very interactive too. So thank you guys so much for coming in and talking about some of these events here. Is there anything else you know that you wanna add that we didn't touch upon? I think that sometimes people think that they need to spend a lot of money to mm -hmm. keep their kids engaged during the summer. And we're a great example of you just need to walk through our doors and find out what we have to offer. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Heather and Takara, for coming in today. It was such a pleasure. We'll stick with us. We have more midday coming up after the break.